Mikel who gets a catch. He's got patrol. everyone, welcome to George Smith Field as SEC Sports presents high school football. The Matamidi Zephyrs at five and one host the Tartan Titans at four and two. And one of the biggest rivalries in the Metro East and in district play since this is high school football. I'm Mike Beaton all by myself talking to myself, but that's all right, we have a huge matchup awaiting us with the winner getting the inside track to the number one seed in section 45A. Now as the weeks were moving along, it looked for a while that this would be a matchup of undefeateds. Both Matamidi and Tartan were 4-0 through the first four games of the season. That narrative changed in week five with the Zephyrs getting shut out by St. Thomas Academy. And the Titans have lost two games in a row, one to Sibley, one to Hastings, as the lineups are introduced. Matamidi swept the season series with Tartan last year, 27-20 in the regular season, and 14 to nothing in the Section 4 5A final. We had that game for you last year on SEC. For, Zeph for the Zephyrs, the thorn has been the quarterfinal round of the state tournament. They lost both times in the last two years. For Tartan, you talk about ebb and flow, topsy-turvy, feast or famine, Tartan has defined those axioms, those analogies for the last few weeks. In the first four games, they scored nearly 40 points per contest and allowed a total of 13. In the last two games, they have managed just seven points and have given up 40. The Simley loss in particular was perplexing. The Spartans, they've been roughly a 500 team the last couple of years after being state tournament contenders in 5A for some time. That being said, for Matt Dedeker and the Titans, they're hoping this is a continuation of their upward progression over the last few seasons. In 2015, the Titans finished 1-8. and eight. In 2016, that mark was 3-6. and six. Last year, 5-6, and six, including a trip to the section final. This year, they sit at 4-2. and two. They are hoping to get at least a couple more wins. And the reason this game will likely decide the number one seed in section 4-5A next week for the MEA matchups, Tartan will face Park Center, the Pirates struggling all season, and the Zephyrs will take on North St. Paul, a team that hasn't won too much over the last several years. So you would have to imagine both schools would win those games on Wednesday. Here's something else to consider. If you go by QRF, Matamidi well ahead of Tartan. In fact, Tartan and Central are tied. So for the Titans, not only is this game critical to preserve their hope of getting a number one seed, if they lose this game, depending on what happens with St. Paul Central, they could face the prospect of having to play in the first round. The top two teams in every class, barring 6A, get a first round bye. Matamidi is the favorite as they have been for the last few years. They will receive to start this game, Tyler Tangwall and Tanner Whitmore back to receive this kick. Tartan wearing the white, Matamidi wearing the navy. High school football at George Smith Field and we're underway. This is a short kick and it's fielded by Tangwall. Tangwall to the 25 looking for space and he'll be tackled at the 30 yard line. Matamidi will start their first series from there. Players to watch for the Zephyrs, Eric Bjork, he's had three 100-yard rushing games. He also leads the Zephyrs in tackles with 35, so keep an eye on him defensively. Jay Garlinson in 
Five of the six games this season, he has thrown for 112 yards or more and just one interception on the season, two rushing touchdowns. Javon Hadley, one of the top receivers to keep an eye on. He picked up two touchdowns and Matamidi's win over Simley. First and 10 from the 30, and it's a running play. Good for a yard, that was Eric Bjork on the carry. Elbert on the tackle. Second and eight, Zephyr. They give him two yards on the play. Eric Bjork averaging six and a half yards a carry. Two touchdowns, 648 yards on the season. And this Matamidi offense has been lights out with the exception of the 21-0 loss to St. Thomas Academy a couple weeks ago. It is a chilly game, temperature in the 40s as Bjork gets another carry, and he'll push his way forward to the 35-yard line for a gain of three. That will set up third and five for the Zephyrs. Third and five, Zephyrs. Matabidi coming off a 49-12 win over Forest Lake. And as we said, with the exception of St. Thomas Academy, they can put up big numbers on offense. We may see a passing play here on third down. And we won't. At least not yet. Jay Garlinson, I believe, got Tartan on the hard count. And he did just that. That should be enough for the first. And indeed it is. So Arlinson baiting the Titans on the hard count, drawing the encroachment penalty, and a fresh set of downs for the Zephyrs. They don't even need to worry about a third down conversion, and the drive will continue at the 40. Arlinson lining up under center. And he got Tartan to jump again. Arlinson, perhaps taking a page or two from Aaron Rodgers and all the other quarterbacks who are notorious for their use of the hard count. First and five, Zephyrs. So the Zephyrs pick up 10 yards for free. They'll have first and five at the 45. And if you're Dave Metzel, you'll take this. Hand off to 44. That is Michael Hershey, and he pushes his way forward to the 39-yard line. Tim Owen got the stop, but a gain of 16 for the Zephyrs. Michael Hershey, only 11 carries entering this game, but he was averaging 5.1 per carry. Hershey, the 5'11 senior. First and 10 from the 39. Arlinson almost got Tartan to jump again. It's a screen pass to Tyler Tangwall. And Tangwall will be spotted at the 34 for a gain of five. Tangwall, the six foot junior. Second and four, Zephyrs. Tyler Tangwall, the top receiver on receptions, 12.4 yards. And Hershey gets the carry, gains a couple. It will be third and short for the Zephyrs. We'll see if Arlinson can bait Titan into another hard count. Titan, I meant Tartan. Anytime you have an alliterative nickname, like Tartan does, the Tartan Titans, sometimes your tongue can get tied. Third and three, Zephyrs. Third and three is the official call. Hershey in the fullback position and Bjork, the deep back. They hand it off to Bjork. Bjork on the carry. Tackled by... That should be enough for the first. 
also the 20. Elbert on the tackle. And indeed it is. Carries good for a Zephyr first down. So the first third down conversion. Traverius Elbert on the tackle. He wears number 48. <laughs> Fresh set of downs at the 29. And Arlinson got tripped up by his fullback, I believe. And as you know, once you go down, the play ends. So Arlinson has no chance to recover. The ball spotted at the 37 yard line. A loss of nine. That will make it second and 19. Second and 19, Tough break for the Zephyrs. We'll see if they can recover. Arlinson lining up under center. And we have a stoppage in play. Tartan calls timeout, their first of three. With this timeout, we'd like to remind you about our bi-weekly show known as Sports Path, which recaps all of the happenings in Ramsey County and the part that encompasses Matamidi in Washington County. Sports Path airing every Wednesday night on a two-week basis here on the channels of SCC. <laughs> and we'd like to welcome all of you watching this wherever you may be, on YouTube or on tape delay here on SCC. And we hope to provide some playoff coverage for you as we transition to that part of the season. Matamidi Soccer will start their playoff run shortly. The Matamidi girls defending champions in Class A, and the boys are the number one team in Section 4A, so they will host all the way through, and if they host the section final, you'll see it right here on SEC Sports. 7-11 left in the first quarter. Javon Hadley in motion. They feed the ball to Hershey, though, and the fullback gets the ball back to the 30-yard line, but it will be third and about 11 facing the Zephyrs. Thuringer on the tackle. Carter Thuringer on the tackle, the 5'11", 282-pound senior. He's all that. <laughs> Third and 12, Zephyrs. Third and 12, the call. Arlinson lines up under center again. I would not be surprised if this is a passing play. And indeed it is as he rolls to his right. Going deep, pass under thrown and caught for the interception. Antoine Kimmins stayed in bounds, makes the catch and the Titans get a big stop with Matavidi driving. Antoine Kimmins, an all around specialist for the Titans. He'll be going to play basketball in college, but one of those all around athletes. He had a great junior season with the Titans, and we've got to wait another month or so before we get to see him on the court again. But this guy can do it all, and he comes up with a big interception. So we'll get our first look at the Titans offense, first and 10 from the 16. And with some space to the 30-yard line was Tim Owen. Tim Owen had 105 yards rushing against Number Hastings. That ended a three-game streak of sub-100 games. He started the season with 209 in Tartan's runaway win over Hill Murray. And complimenting him is Tian Dang, number five. You'll see him get some carries as the game moves along. Solomon Whalen, the quarterback, number seven. Owen on the carry. We have a flag on the play. This may be a holding call. Lucia on the tackle. Flag on the play. 
And it is indeed holding. holding so that will push Tartan back 10 yards. So where's the flag at? It was thrown at the 25, or 29. Tough break for the Titans, as Owen did a fantastic job breaking a tackle and attempting to turn a negative play into a positive one. So following the holding call, the, spot, the ball first will be spotted 20, at the 19, 20. first and 20. A long 20. Kimmins in motion. Owen with the carry, looking for some space up the middle. And picks up a few of those yards. Owen on the carry. Owen moves it to the 29 yard Owen line for a gain of 10. A welcome play if you're Matt Dedeker and the Titans. Second, Second and, 11. and 11 from the 29 on a chilly evening here at George Smith Field, the home of the Matamidi Zephyrs. The site for some great athletes, great games, great teams over the years. Kimmins in motion on second down. Owen with another carry, finds some space up the right side. The Titans offensive line giving him holes and Owen making the most of them. So after a first and 21 following a holding call, Owen makes it third and about two. Ball the 38 yard line. Third and two, Titans. So a gain of 10 followed by a gain of nine for Tim Owen. Titans would love to convert here. Another run play and this is going to be close. Christian Hernandez on the carry. And the officials, based on the spot, that should be enough for the first and it is. They're moving the chains. Ball spotted at the 41 yard line. Christian yeah, Hernandez the gets them just Titans enough. Hernandez averaging three and a half yards a carry. On, the 5'9", 202 pound junior. Maybe shades of Leroy Horde. If you need one yard, I'll get you three. If you need five yards, I'll get you three for those who don't remember. Fresh set of downs for the Titans. Terrell Albert on the carry and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two in the play. Mills are on the tackle for the Zephyrs. Second and 12, Titans. Second and 12 for Tartan. School that's looking to get themselves in the conversation in section 45A. Whether or not they could contend with the likes of Cooper and Elk River, we won't know until they get to state, but you gotta get through that section. A low snap, it's picked up by Whalen, but he has nowhere to go. Whalen on the carry. The officials may have been generous on the spot. In any case, that miscue wastes it down for the Titans. They'll have third and 11 coming up. With two minutes and 40 seconds remaining, in the first quarter. If you just joined us, Antoine Kimmins got an interception to stall a Matamidi drive. Tartan was able to convert on third down following a holding penalty. Now they've got third and long and they'll have to throw it. Whalen in the shotgun. Three step drop, throws to his right and the pass falls incomplete. Pass down. And that will send out the punting unit. Dorian Singer was the intended receiver. And Singer will convert from wide receiver to punter. So Tartan unable to cash in on the interception. Tyler Tangwall back to receive this punt. He is set up just inside the 25. 
Snap is clean. Good punt. Tangwall had a little bit of trouble and he has nowhere to go. Had a little bit of trouble fielding the punt. Forward progress will spot the ball at the 23 yard line. So we'll see if Matamidi can move the ball down the field without complications. And if you'd like to follow us and all of our happenings, just follow us on social media, SCC TV Sports, on Twitter and on Facebook, Suburban Community Channels. And don't forget to check out our YouTube page if you're not already there. First and 10 for the Zephyrs, Arlinson throws a quick slant. Pass to Hadley, Javon Hadley makes the catch and they spot him at the 30 for a gain of seven. On the it will be second and three for the Zephyrs. Second and four, Zephyrs. We saw on the first drive, Hershey and Bjork doing a great job driving through lanes. And we'll see if Bjork can find another lane to run through. And he'll get enough for the first down. He's tackled from behind by number 56, Shaquille Young, but not before. Bjork gets them a first down. Ball will be spotted at the 38 yard line. Eric Bjork, as we noted, six and a half yards per carry. Bjork on the carry. And he gets another, that's all folks. He gets another carry to the 40 yard line for a gain of two. Those three 100 yard games, if you're keeping track, 139 against Spark, 103 against St. Thomas, St. Thomas Academy, and 172 in the runaway win over Forest Lake. Thirty seconds left in the quarter. Second and eight. It's Hershey on the carry this time, and he won't go far. Hershey with the carry. So it will be third and just under six yards. I presume the Zephyrs, yep, they will let time expire and they will come up with a third down strategy here to start the second quarter. So the first quarter comes to a hasty end. We remain scoreless. Just a couple of penalties, all on the Titans. Two for encroachment, one for holding. No penalties on the Zephyrs just yet. But a quick moving first quarter. The big play so far coming from Antoine Kimmins getting an interception at the 19 yard line to stop a Matamidi drive. And if you're wondering who the voice is on this broadcast, no need to fear. This is my broadcast debut for SEC Sports, and it's never too late for a first, but I've been a contributor for Sports Path over the last year. So same face, different place, if you will. Third and six, Arlinson drops back to pass. He's under pressure from Owen. He has to get rid of it. He does, and the pass is almost caught, but it's dropped by Dean Trowbridge. If he had caught that, Trowbridge could have gone the distance. Instead, Matamidi will have to punt. Give credit to Tim Owen for bringing the pressure. So another Matamidi drive stalls. And Antoine Kimmins Lines up to receive the punt. Bell in the punt for the Zephyrs. In the Sam Bell, the 6'2 senior, will punt it away. And this is a short one. 
It takes a Matamidi bounce. Tartan staying away from it. A short punt nonetheless though, too much hang time for Sam Bell and Tartan will start their next series at the 35 yard line. As we noted, the Zephyrs, two time section champions, winning last year and in 2016. If records are an indication, they are the favorite to do so again, but this Tartan team has been on the rise over the years. Let's see what Solomon Whalen can do. Breaking a tackle to pick up a couple of yards was number 22, Cole McCarver, or 32. McCarver on the tackle. McCarver on the tackle. That was Christian Hernandez on the carry. Second and six. Gain of four though as Hernandez was able to break a tackle behind the line of scrimmage to pick up a few. Kimmins in motion on second and six. Owen with the carry. And he pushes the pile forward. Close to a first down. He'll be a yard and a half short. As you've noticed, even in 5A, there are some two-way players in this sport. Third and one, Titan. Titans hoping to convert and at least get some more field position in their favor. Owen with the carry. He's got some space on the right side. He's got a lane. One man to beat. To the 10. He's in. Touchdown, Tartan. Owen with the carry. Touchdown, Titans. Had to make sure there were no flags, but it's a touchdown, a 57-yard run for Tim Owen. Running through spaces and finding a lane down the right side. Tartan gets on the board first. And for a team that had scored seven points in their last two games, boy, will they take it. Whalen, the quarterback, and he'll take the extra point here. Whalen's kick through the uprights. 10-15 left in the second quarter, and the Titans score first. A 57-yard run for Tim Owen. He is capable of picking up yards and bunches, as we noted, 209 in the win over Hill Murray. What a play, though. And for the Zephyrs, Uncharted territory here. They're not used to trailing. As we noted, just one loss. Most of their games, they've won and they've won big. And for the Titans, even though they've given up 40 points over the last two games, in Section 4-5A, they still have the best defense in terms of points allowed, just 8.8. .8. And this has been one of those seasons where it seems like anything could happen. 5A, 6A, no matter the class, there have been some crazy results. You probably have seen in 6A, number one teams unable to preserve that ranking. A lot of craziness in the bigger classes, and Tim Owen gets the Titans on the board in a big way. This is a short kick. Tartan trying to pooch it, and I don't know if Tartan, they were close, but could not catch it. They tried the pooch, it almost worked, but the ball went out of bounds. And that's an illegal kick. So Matamidi will get good field position to start their next series. Give credit to the Titans for trying to catch them off guard with the pooch kick. 
As you know, once the ball goes past 10 yards, the kicking team can recover it. Illegal procedure, Titans. Illegal procedure is the official description for you football nerds out there. But that will give Matamidai great field position. Because the ball went out of bounds before the 35 yard line, the ball will be spotted at the point it went out of bounds. So the Zephyrs have a short field. First and 10 at the 43. And we'll see if they can get a counter strike. Standard eye. Bjork gets the ball. He's got some space up the middle and is brought down at midfield. Tackle by Randy Kumogny, the 6'3 junior. Second and three for the Zephyrs. Javon Hadley relaying the play. Hadley, you may remember, had some heroics a year ago in basketball, the section semifinal against Tatino Grace. Bjork with the carry, gets past midfield, and he'll have enough for the first down. Jacob Schwinghammer gets credit on the tackle. Derek Olson got in there as well, but for Bjork, it's a gain of four and a half, but we can't use halves in football, so we'll call it five. More than enough for a first down. Standard die again. Hadley and Tangwall to the right, although Arlinson hasn't done much passing. We have a play action here, though, and the pass is caught by the tight end. Devin Melzer with a catch, and he'll pick up another first down if the spot is where I believe it is, and it is. Zephyrs needed 10, Melzer gave them 10. And another first down for the Zephyrs. And if my stats are correct, that was Melzer's first catch of the season. We'll check though. Bjork with more space. He'll pick up two or three more yards. I take that back. That was Melzer's second catch of the season. Bjork with a gain of three on that last play. Second and seven Second for the Zephyrs. Zephyrs. Who find themselves trailing in the early going following a 57 yard touchdown run by Tartan's Tim Owen. Standard eye. Hadley to the left, Tangwall to the right. Play action. He's looking for Hadley. Arlinson is, and the pass falls incomplete. Arlinson had him, but he overthrows his target, and it will be third and seven. Third and seven, Zephyrs. Come on, Blue. High school football here at George Smith Field. And then we'd like to thank the Matamidi staff for their accommodations, giving us a spot in the press box. We've been over here many times, of course, over the years. In our old days as TV19 and under our current brand as SCC. Bjork will try to get the first and he's wrapped up by a host of tacklers. So that will make it fourth down at about seven. I wouldn't be surprised if the Zephyrs go for it here. We are in four down territory. Bjork lost a couple of yards, so fourth and nine at the 34. You're not close enough for a field goal, but you're too close to try to pooch it. They will go for it here on fourth down. 
Hadley to the left, Tangwall to the right. Bjork the deep back, Arlinson under pressure, finds Bjork, and Bjork breaks the tackle, and will get enough for the first down. Tartan says no, but Bjork gets the reception. And with Arlinson under pressure, he dumps it off to his running back. And Eric Bjork, with his eighth reception of the season, gets the first down there. First and 10 at the 25. A key fourth down conversion for the Zephyrs to extend the drive. And they'll get another free five yards unless they move first. And Matamidai did move first. False start. That will push the Zephyrs back five yards. Not that you ever want a penalty against you, but if you're Dave Metzel, better to have it on first down than fourth down. First and 15. Arlinson hands it off to Bjork. Bjork following his blocker and gets back to the 30 yard line. So the Zephyrs pick up the five yards they lost. Kamara on the tackle for the Titans. Josh Kamara making the tackle, the 6'1 senior. Second and 10. Eric Zephyrs. Bjork, six feet, 195 pound senior. Matamidai hoping to continue their march. Screen pass and it's dropped. It was ruled a forward pass, so it's incomplete. Tangwall the intended receiver and third and 10 coming up. But as we saw in the last series of downs, this is four down territory for the Zephyrs. Unless Metzel feels they're close enough to try a field goal. Third and 10, Zephyrs. Arlinson in trouble, finds a hole, and he's taken down from behind. Arlinson with the carry. Jacob Schwinghammer gets the tackle, limiting Arlinson's gain to a couple of yards. Fourth and eight, Zephyrs. As we noted, this is four down territory anyway. Zephyrs need to get the ball past the 15 to convert. Fourth and eight. Tingwall and Hadley to the right, or left I should say. Arlinson looking that way as he drops back. He's in trouble. He'll try to take it himself. And he's well short of the first down. So Tartan forcing the turnover on downs. On paper, Matamidai perhaps the favorite team in this matchup, but it's the Titans who have been making the clutch plays. Will take over on the Antoine Kimmins interception, the 57 yard touchdown run by Tim Owen. And once more, stalling another Matamidi drive once they get in striking range. The Zephyrs have officially yet to enter the red zone, but they've been close. Instead, Tartan takes over at the 22. And keep an eye out for number one, Tim Owen. He'll get the carry here as he's looking for space on the left side. And he doesn't have much to work with there. No gain on the play. Hold on the carry. Trowbridge on the tackle. Trowbridge on the tackle. And you see number 77. Tristan Thill scampering 
to the sideline. Usually you watch the side judge and he's yeah. Short gain. They'll call it second and nine here. Kimmins in motion. And that play won't net much. Christian Hernandez on the carry. Hernandez on the carry. Trowbridge on the tackle. Trowbridge with another tackle. But the Titans are looking at third and eight here. Third and eight, Titans. From about the 24. You would think Tartan would want a conversion here because Matamidi has all three timeouts if they're not able to get across. Waylon looking to pass, and he's sacked. Number 63, Alex Zell. Zell gets the sack. Waylon had no idea he was there. And it's a three and out for the Titans. The Zephyrs will have great field position and plenty of time to attempt an equalizer. They'll have all three timeouts as well. They'll have an eternity, in other words. Waylon with a good punt. Tangwall, forward progress will spot him at the 49 yard line. So the Zephyrs with great field position, two minutes, 43 seconds, and all three timeouts. As I just noted, they may as well have an eternity to try to get an equalizer before halftime. As we noted, the number one seed in section 45A potentially at stake. Now, there'll be some other factors that go into it. Tartan's loss to Simley may not help them in that cause, but the head-to-head -head matchups Play a big part as well. Arlinson flushed out of the pocket, finds Hershey with a throw. And Hershey gets the ball to about the 40 yard line. Second and a long one. And a flag on the play before we even get a play off. We would like to remind the, the flag was thrown by the line judges. Please go to the track area near the end zone by the entrance gates. Again, parents of the seniors, please go to the end We await the call. <laughs> Illegal substitution <laughs> against Matamidi. Illegal substitution. That's a five yard penalty. So instead of second. Second and, six. and a long one, it's second and a long six. The second penalty incurred on Matamidi. But there's still plenty of time. And they have a guy who can move the ball downfield like Eric Bjork. He'll pick up those yards that were lost and plenty more. He's tackled at about the 32 yard line. I should say the 27 yard line. That's a gain of 18 yards. Fresh set of downs for the Zephyrs. 138 and all three timeouts. So a plethora of options available as Bjork continues his run. 
And now, Matamini will use their first of three timeouts. The ball is spotted at the 23 yard line. Well, they've got the ball at the 22 and the yard marker at the 23, it seems. <laughs> Go figure that one. <laughs> so which yard marker is it? We'll find out after the timeout. We know this much. The Titans still lead 7 to nothing. Matamidi hoping to get an equalizer. So the ball at the 22, the down marker at the 23, second and five from the 22. Let's see what Arlinson does here. Looking for a pass, dumps it to Hershey, and Hershey is pushed out of bounds. Question is, was it enough for the first? And it looks like it was just short. Now Hershey pushed out of bounds. That stops the clock with 123. Zephyrs can hang on to their two remaining timeouts. Third and one, Zephyrs. Third and a yard. It's a keeper for Arlinson, and he'll have more than enough. In fact, he's still going. The pile continues to push him further into the red zone and inside the 10. The clock will stop to move the chains, and it will be first and goal from the eight. Arlinson puts his helmet back on, and he will take this play off. Sam Bell going in at the quarterback position. Sam Bell, if you're curious, eight of 12 with two touchdowns on the year. So this guy can move the ball downfield, but he'll hand it off to Bjork, and Bjork will run it in for the touchdown. For a Zephyr touchdown. An eight-yard run for Eric Bjork. And Bjork picks up his third rushing touchdown of the season. Oswald in the kick for the Zephyrs. Lining up for the extra point is Kyle Oswald, the 5'10 sophomore. His dad's a head wrestling coach. And Oswald. Gets it through. The extra point is good for the Zephyrs. So with 55.5 ticks remaining in the second quarter, we are tied at seven. Now, the question is, what will happen before we end the half? Tartan does have two timeouts remaining. They also get the ball to start the second half. Depending on how this kick return plays out, they may try to move the ball downfield and set up a scoring play, or they may elect to take a 7-7 lead at halftime. Tartan winning the lion's share of the big play so far. Getting an interception. The 57-yard run by Tim Owen. And then getting Matamidi to stall on a drive near the 20. Singer and Kimmins back to receive for the Titans. Bergman in the kick for the Zephyrs. 
Kimmins awaiting the kick. Hayes Berggren puts it in play and it's a deep one. Kick fielded near the 20, that's number six. And he's run out of bounds. Dorian Singer. As you know, the clock stops for change of possession. So Tartan will have the ball at the 31 and 50.8 seconds to do something with it. They do have two timeouts. So they can use the entire field if they decide to go for it. Their passing game hasn't been too successful yet. And they'll hand it off to Owen. Owen looking to turn the corner, and he does. Runs out of bounds. That will stop the clock. Owen gets the ball to the 37-yard line for a gain of six. So second and four. And 45 seconds remaining in the quarter. Second and four, The perfect result. If you're Matt Dedeker, who told me if he tried to spend time talking about the amazing talents of his athletes, it would use up his entire day. As Owen, we may have a holding call, a flag on the play. Owen, with the carry. Owen has enough down, but this may be coming Owen back. Flag on the play. And it is a holding call. Holding Titans. And Hernandez. Looking a little gimpy as he makes his way to the Tartan sideline. Unfortunate because Owen had the first down. And that holding call may have been why. So that will make it second and 14 and with 37 seconds left, we'll see if Tartan decides to concede an effort to get one more score or if they'll continue their quest. Owen on the carry. Picks up three yards. And Tartan electing to hold on to their timeouts, but we have a big problem. Tim Owen is holding his leg. Injury timeout. That stops the clock with 25 seconds. Athletic trainer comes out. Tim Owen, 5'10", senior, 170 pounds, as we noted. Three 100-yard games on the run. Picked up 105 against Hastings, even though it was in a losing effort. It would be a huge loss for the Titans if he is unable to continue. And he's walking slowly back to the sideline. It's a good sign that he was able to get up. And it looks like he's putting weight on the left knee, the left leg. If there's any benefit to having this happen, it's right before halftime, so that'll give him time to 
take a closer look at the injury to see if he'll be able to play again. The ball is fumbled on third down. Matabidi says they have it. And they do. I'm not sure who came up with a fumble recovery. There was a big pile up down there, but the Zephyrs get a big stop. And they have 9.4 seconds. Time for one, maybe two plays. The Zephyrs do have two timeouts. So they can use the middle of the field to get a quick playoff, call timeout, and then set up for one more try. Arlinson, pump fakes, throws, pass, is underthrown. Hadley, the intended receiver, 5.6 seconds. And in all likelihood, barring a defensive penalty, this next play will be the last one of the half. 5.6 seconds on the clock. Arlinson, three-step drop, looking for Hadley, and he was well covered. One second left. Down in distance, irrelevant at this point. Last play of the half, and Arlinson won't be looking for any quick slants, screens, or dumps here. I would expect that he'll heave it toward the end zone and hope one of his receivers can come up with it. And Dave Metzel will call a timeout to drop a play. They had two remaining. Watching high school football on SEC. And a reminder that we'll have some playoff coverage coming your way if you're watching this online or on your local television station. If Matamidi soccer gets through to the section finals, we'll hope to have at least one of those for you. And also in SEC territory, another big game taking place in North St. Paul as the Polars host the Stillwater Ponies in what could be the first of two meetings between those two. They met last year in the section 4-3A finals. Stillwater won that one in four sets. North St. Paul hoping to change that tune this year. And if you're watching this online or on television, on our next Sports Path episode, we'll have an expose on North St. Paul's volleyball program, winning their first 20 games of the season before losing, and continuing to build under Stephanie Blanda. And that program, they may not have the state tournament appearances that some of the more esteemed schools do, but they've been consistent. And speaking of consistency, Matamidai has done just that over the last few years. One more play, barring a defensive penalty with one second left. Arlinson, biding his time, gets rid of it. He's got Hadley open, and Hadley cannot hang on to it. Arlinson pass intended for Hadley, incomplete. Hadley was right there, the pass thrown to him in the perfect spot, and he couldn't hang on. We'll head to halftime with the score tied at seven. Matabidi and Tartan in a critical game in the section four, five, a standing. We'll take a break and bring you the second half. You're watching high school football on SEC Sports. And we welcome you back to George Smith Field on a chilly Friday evening, Friday the 12th, here at Matamidai. On the east end of White Bear Lake, Mike Beaton all by myself talking to myself. SEC Sports, bringing you coverage of high school football like no other station can provide. Matamidai and Tartan in a key 4-5A section battle we are tied at seven as we start the second half. 
in a game where Tartan won the lion's share of key plays. There was the interception by Antoine Kimmins that stalled the Matamidi drive in the first quarter. Tim Owen ran in for a 57-yard touchdown, but his health is a concern. He had an injury at the end of the second quarter, walked off the field. We'll see if he's able to return. Matavidai got the equalizing score with 55 seconds left in the quarter. An eight yard run by Eric Bjorn. And a reminder, if you'd like to stay up to date on all the happenings with SCC and their sports coverage and other programs like Lake Area Beat, Northeast Journal. And hey, we've got a drone. Where did that drone come from? You may not be able to see it on the monitors or on our cameras, but somebody brought a drone. I know drones are a thing. A lot of Edi players are waving to it. <laughs> I don't know who owns it or what purpose it serves, but gives everyone a little entertainment and if nothing else, gives them a momentary distraction from this cold weather, and I mean cold. It was slightly warmer than yesterday, and as far as I can, as far as I can see, no snow flurries, but it was a chilly one. Should say it still is a chilly one. Haysburg Grimwall line up for the kickoff. And Singer and Kimmins will go back to receive it. Matamita at five and one, Tartan at four and two. The winner will pick up a key negotiating chip for that one seed in section 4-5-A. And for Tartan, they are also fighting to keep that first round by a loss here. And that could put them in a precarious position with St. Paul Central. The Singer fields that kick on the near side. Breaks one tackle, but can't break more. And he'll be spotted at the 15 yard line. A great special teams play on the part of Matamidai. So a deep field to work with for the Titans. And I do see Tim Owen lining up, as we noted, that injury taking place just before the end of the second quarter. So he had the halftime break to rest up. And it looks like it might have paid off. Owen with the carry. Owen with the carry, and he gets the ball to the 21 yard line for a gain of six. So to finish up on that plug before I got distracted by the drone, if you'd like to follow up on all the happenings of Suburban Community Channels, you can follow us on Twitter at SCCTV Sports and check out our, our Facebook page. 11 minutes and 20 seconds. We are tied at seven. Kimmins in motion. Hernandez with the carry. Hernandez on the carry. And Kristen Hernandez gets starting a couple yards closer to the first down. It will be third and a long one. Third and one, Titans. The ball spotted at the 24 yard line. Matamidai, the two-time section champions in 4-5-A, the Titans, reaching the section final a year ago. Perhaps it's not a surprise that we have another close one here. The last two meetings with the Zephyrs and the Titans have been nail biters. Matamidai winning the regular season Owen battle 27-20. Owen with the carry. And we may have a measurement. Well, we do have a measurement. A visual one by the referee who says Owen got enough for the first down. In the section final, Matamidai won a defensive battle 14 to nothing. For Matamidai, the obstacle has been the state quarterfinal round losing in the last two years, but the first step is getting there. And that's something they've been able to do. 
Fresh set of downs at the 25 for the Titans. And Kimmins will get the carry this time. He cuts up the middle and picks up about six yards. Kimmins with the carry. 31 yard line. And while you watch from the warmth of your office, home, mobile device, we'd like to thank our crew for braving the chilly temperatures on this evening. Lola and Aaron and Carlos for making this game possible. Wayland lines up under center. Owen has a carry, has some blocking, but has space on the left side. I thought he had nowhere to go, but Owen makes himself a lane. And the running extraordinaire gets the Titans the first down. The ball will be spotted at the 45-yard line for a gain of 13. Tim Owen, the 5'10 senior wizard. I thought he was going to be pinned on the left side. Uh, Tim Owen's agility and cutting skills have not decreased. Remember, he had that 57-yard scamp before a touchdown. Whalen flushed out, finds Ramirez. Now when a flag comes in, that was Hernandez, I should say, but we may be going back a few yards. An eligible receiver is the signal I'm getting. And that is indeed the call. An eligible receiver downfield, and that will push the Titans back five yards. So we'll replay the down and it's a loss of five. So first and 15 at the 40. First and 15, Titans. Tough break as Whalen was able to hook up with her Hernandez. I'll to try again, Owen with the carry. Look at him go. Matamidi pushes him out of bounds. That was Brock Bertelson. Nope, that was Cole McCarver on the stop. I'm getting my 22s mixed up. And that will be a gain of three and a half yards. But there are no halves in football, so we'll call it second and 12. Whalen to Owen on the handoff. And good penetration by the Monomedi defensive line that time. Owen with no place to go. A long third down coming up for the Titans. What could have been second and short on the pass to Hernandez was nullified by the ineligible receiver penalty. And the Titans are looking at third and 13, following a loss of one on the part of Owen. Tartan has to get the ball past the opposing 45 yard line to convert for first. And this figures to be a passing play. Waylon under pressure. Pass is deflected. With the knockdown, Dean Trowbridge. Nobody was on Trowbridge. He had a, an unobstructed lane to Waylon and. He blew up the play. So Trowbridge, the 6'2 senior, getting the job done defensively. And Matamidi will take over following the punt. By Dorian Singer. High snap. Singer gets the punt. It's a deep one. Tangwall fields it. And he's wrapped up quickly. Hey, 
Monomidai takes over. And a Tartan player slow to get up. That's number 48. 48, Traverius Elbert. Traverius Elbert slow to get off the 160 pound sophomore. Listed at 5'9. Arlinson on first down hands it off to Bjork. Not a surprising combination there. And Bjork runs it to the 30 yard line. So, number 48 for the Titans, Traverius Elbert. I don't know if. The Elbert family is watching, but I would venture to say that he is the younger sibling of another Elbert who did amazing things at Tartan, and I believe her name was Tia Elbert, who happens to be a good friend of mine. Second and four for the Zephyrs. Bjork gets the carry. And pounds it past the first down marker. They spot the ball just short of the 36, but that was enough for first down. Arlinson. Play action, rolls to his right. Pass, falls incomplete. Tim Owen on the coverage. The intended receiver was Michael Hershey and he bobbled it a couple of times and that allowed Owen to swoop in and get the stop. And if you're interested in the happenings of the alumni, uh, T. Albert graduated four years ago. Just took a job as a pricing specialist for Texas Instruments down in Dallas. So if she's watching, I send you my greetings and congratulations on taking the first step toward your career aspirations. Second and 10 for Madam Edai following the incompletion. Bjork. Looking to cut left. And then cuts up the middle to gain a couple more yards. So Bjork turned what could have been no gain into a short gain. And the ball will be spotted just shy of the 40. That will make it third and roughly seven yards. Maybe six. Key third down here. Arlinson looking to throw. But he's got plenty of space, he'll keep it. Plays whistle dead. Arlinson took a nasty hit. It's more than enough for the first down, but he got leveled by number 46, Zach Meyer. Arlinson gets the first down, but he may be feeling that hit after Meyer stopped him in his tracks. Fresh set of downs for the Zephyrs at midfield, close to it at the 49. And I don't think Matamidi got the playoff in time. Delay of game is the call. That will make it first and 15 from the 44. Zephyrs. 
Jay Garlinson entering this game, 54 of 100. That's 54% for you mathematicians. 714 yards, 12 touchdowns, one interception. He now has two. After his throw to in the first quarter was picked off by Kimmins. A 112 rating though, and Sam Bell doesn't spend much time under center, but he's been effective when they put him in there. Bjork on the carry for first down, and Bjork picks up the five yards they lost, and we have a bit of a skirmish unfolding here between Javon Hadley and Derek Olson. Flags go everywhere. This may be offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And that is indeed the case, offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And nullifying personal fouls on both teams. We will stay at second down. And even though it's offsetting, the officials will put that out there as a warning. Hey, don't lose your cool. Javon Hadley and Derek Olson took exception to that last play and went at each other. That drew the flag. But the penalties are of no consequence since they offset Sam Bell on the direct snap, keeps it. And will end up at the 43 yard line. And that draws applause from the Monomedi sideline. Not sure what that's about. It will be third and one. The ball at the 43 yard line. A long one, third and two. More long one. They gotta get the ball past the 41, I can tell you that much. And Bjork will do just that as he breaks one tackle and will push his way to the 35 yard line. And more flags are flying. Things getting chippy between these two longtime rivals. Things are getting heated. For Matamini, they've been the big dogs for the last couple of years. Tartan trying to rewrite the narrative. We'll have a discussion with the officiating crew and see how this is sorted out. But we've had some extracurricular in these last couple of plays. And as you know, emotions, no matter the sport, can sometimes overwhelm the senses. But it started a couple plays ago when Hadley and Olsen were pushing at each other. And following the run by Bjork, you saw a little more. The clock has stopped at 3.43 in the third quarter. And once again, it will be offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. So Bjork will get the first down for the Zephyrs. So the second time in the last three plays that offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties have been called. Something to monitor as the game continues. But you have to remember, this is a game. You cannot let emotions dictate your actions. This is a big game. These are two longtime rivals in the Metro East. Matamidai with a lot of history. Tartan looking to add some history after a few lean years. 
Both teams started the season at 4-0. With both teams running over their opponents, starting in a big way, as we noted in the open, averaging nearly 40 points a game through the first four games of the season. In the last 10 quarters, they have managed just 14. The Zephyrs doing a little better at five and one, picking up a big win over Forest Lake after dropping a contest to St. Thomas Academy. The Cadets, a 5A contender. The Zephyrs in the top 10. Both these teams were in the top 10 after week four. Two losses from Tartan have changed that. So after the delay, we resume action. <laughs> Excuse me, Arlinson throwing to Hadley and the pass falls incomplete. Hadley had it for a minute, but Derek Olson on the coverage was able to knock it out. That will make it second and 10, and we have a Mata Midai player down. And he gets up, that is number 64. Eric Anderson, 6'4", 224-pound senior. Oh, blue. And Eric Anderson walks off, may have cramped up. Could be just a tweak. But a good sign if you're the Zephyrs and Dave Metzel. So second and 10 following the incompletion. Mata Midai, as we said, a lot of history with football and a lot of history in sports, period. Arlinson drops back. He's under pressure. Dumps it off to Bjork. Bjork to the 30. He'll make his way past the 20. The tackle was from Zach Meyer, but Bjork turns what could have been a broken play into a first down for the Zephyrs at the 16-yard line. Matamidai in the red zone again. They cashed in on their last trip with an eight yard run from Mr. Bjork. Will Eric Bjork do the same? He's been their do everything guy so far. And Bjork with a carry gains a couple more. Second and eight coming up for the Zephyrs. This was some game to make my SCC broadcast debut, wasn't it? We've had some big plays. We've had a little pushing and shoving. In case you forgot, this is still a rivalry. Arlinson, screen pass. And it was... Ruled a catch, I believe. So Tangwall will get credit for the reception, but he slipped while making the catch. And so that ends the play. It's a short gain, so it'll be third and six for the Zephyrs. As they make their way to hopefully a go-ahead score. They trailed 7-0 after Tim Owens' 57-yard touchdown run. Hadley and Tangwall to the right. Another screen pass, and Tangwall drops it. It was a forward pass, ruled incomplete. And I believe we're going to see the field goal unit. Or will it be a fake? <laughs> the kicking game becomes a factor in the higher classes, and that's what we're going to have here. 
This will be a 30-yard kick from the left hash mark. This is Andrew Murphy, the placeholder. Kick is up. And it's good. Kyle Oswald puts Matamidi in front for the first time tonight on a 30-yard field goal. And it had the distance to go 40 yards if needed. So with 128 left in the third quarter, a quarter that has seen a few extracurricular activities brewing, the Zephyrs lead the Titans 10 to seven. So if you're the Titans, you prevent the touchdown thanks to a couple of drops, but Matamida able to move the ball down the field enough to get Kyle Oswald in position for the field goal. And it's 10 to seven in what has been a defensive duel for the most part, much like the section final a year ago between these two. Another kickoff for Hayes Berggren. And Berggren doing a great job pinning Tartan on the sideline. But Singer, he stays in bounds. One man to beat. He's at the 25. He's still going. The 10 stays on his feet. Touchdown! Touchdown, Tartan! What a run! Dorian Singer was pinned on the left sideline, stayed in bounds, and runs it in from about 85 yards out, and that's how quickly the momentum can turn. Tartan takes the lead once more. What a play. Dorian Singer with an 85-yard kick return, unofficially for touchdown. And I've got the Tartan statisticians next to me, and he was telling me that was nice. And if you're a Tartan fan, I think you would agree. Was the 85 yards right? That's what you had. I can still count. Yay! <laughs> so Matamidi was grinding their way downfield in a very emotional drive. Oswald gives him the lead on the field goal. And that didn't last long. Whalen lines up for the extra point, low snap. And he still gets it through. The Tartan staff can't believe it. It was a low snap. Usually that spells disaster. But Whalen, no pressure. <laughs> I think they said sometimes the horse wins, sometimes the horse doesn't. <laughs> so the Tartan staff, they're in disbelief about the last 30 seconds or so. Dorian Singer with an 85-yard kick return for a touchdown, and the Titans lead the Zephyrs 14-10. With 115 left in the third quarter. I've seen some crazy sequences. Last week I was on hand to call St. Croix Lutheran in Highland Park, and that game there was three touchdowns out of four plays from scrimmage. A field goal followed up by Singer's fancy footwork down the left sideline. There were a couple of times I thought he was going to get pushed out of bounds, but he kept his balance, stayed in bounds, and he would not stop until he found Paydirt. And he did from 85 yards out. But we have a long way to go. Don't count out either of these teams. We've seen Eric Bjork inflict a lot of damage on the run for the Zephyrs, and he could do so again. But it goes back to what I was saying in the first half. Even though this game has been close, the Titans have won the lion's share of home run plays, the big plays. This is a short kick. 
and it's fielded by number 11, Tanner Whitmore. And Whitmore wrapped up quickly. At the 23 yard line. But we know Matamidai can move the ball downfield. We've seen that do that several times. And with Eric Bjork, as long as he has some juice in that tank, he can keep on motoring. First and 10 from the 23. Arlinson, play action, rolls to his right, the bootleg, and the pass is caught by Tyler Tangwall at the 36 yard line. A gain of 13 yards. Tangwall able to get at least one foot in bounds. And a good start on this drive for the Zephyrs. Oh, my partner who was supposed to be here tonight, Don Ackerman, would love to see this. Unfortunately, he fell under the weather and wanted to rest up at his home in Burnsville. He should be back on his feet soon, but I'm sending my well wishes to Don because he enjoys sports and he would love what has unfolded here. One play on first down from the 36. And Bjork picks up five yards. And now you see the intensity brewing after a couple of big plays. This may be the last play of the quarter. It will not because that is an incomplete pass. Tangwall, the intended receiver, and that will make it third and five with 22.8 left in the third quarter. High school football here on SCC. Mike Beaton making my broadcast debut on SCC. Not my first rodeo in high school sports. And hopefully not my last. Third and five. Hershey the fullback. Bjork the deep back. And Arlinson's pass to Hadley is complete. And Hadley turns the corner to pick up a couple extra yards. He'll be spotted at the 49-yard line. And that may be the last play of the quarter unless Matamidai decides to play hurry up. And Metzl signals his team to come over. That will be the last play of the quarter. So we'll have 12 more minutes to decide a winner. And who knows what we'll see in the final frame. But this game, playing as advertised with two teams knowing what's at stake. Tartan leading 14 to 10 as we enter the fourth quarter, but Matamidai is driving. As we noted, the winner could get the inside track to the number one seed in section 45A. Not only would that give them a first round bye in the section play, but it would also ensure home field advantage throughout. Matamidai and Tartan have held the top two spots throughout the season, if you go by the QRF rankings, although St. Paul Central is in a tie with them right now. So Tartan, if they drop this game, they should be Park Center. St. Paul Central, they've been up and down, but the Titans, they want to at least get that first round by and they don't want to leave it to chance. So win over Matamidai would assure them of that. And the Zephyrs, a win here and they would lock up the one seed. Hershey on the carry. Hershey on the carry for first down. Michael Hershey brings the ball to the 45-yard line for a gain of four. Michael Hershey, the 5'11", 213-pound fullback. One of many seniors on this Matamidai team. Second and six. Hand off to Bjork. And he can't turn the corner. Bjork on the carry. 
No gain on the play. To say this third down is critical would be an understatement. You're not close enough to make it four down territory, I presume. And you're certainly not close enough for Oswald's leg. Even though Kyle was able to kick one in from 30 yards out. Arlinson drops back, pump fakes. Under some pressure, flips it to Bjork, and he has nowhere to go. The first guy to make contact on the Titans was Jacob Swinghammer. And it looks like Traverius Elbert, number 48, finished the job. And that all started when Tartan was able to get pressure to Arlinson. He flipped it to Bjork. It's a good open field tackling. Results in a punt. Bell will punt it to Kimmins. Kimmins will field it, and he will attempt a return. And I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. A flag is on the field. And Kimmins breaking through, but I'm thinking this is coming back. He's at the 40, but this is all coming back. Kimmins will run it in, but this will not count. Kimmins with the carry, play on the play. And the first big play for the Titans wiped away. And if it's a holding call, it would be half the distance of the goal. The flag was thrown at about the 15 yard line. Unfortunate because Kimmins was able to make his way into the end zone. But again, that touchdown call back. That's happened to Tartan a couple of times in recent games. Block in the back. So no touchdown. So Tartan will take over deep in their own territory. The ball will be spotted at the eight yard line and they have some work to do. Now they are up 14 to 10. You'd love to get a score, but more importantly, you need to pick up a first down or two. And conversely, this is a key defensive series for the Zephyrs. On first down, breaking some tackles is Owen, the ball carrier, and he picks up a few. He gains four. Second and six. Second and six. Madavidai looking to force a three and out. Owen in motion. Screen pass to Owen and he overthrows him. Whalen does. That will make it third and six. As we said, a three and out is the last thing you want if you're Tartan, and the most welcome thing you can get if you're Matamidi. Because if Tartan can get some first downs, they can use the clock to their advantage. 9.22 left in the fourth quarter. If you just joined us, a punt return for a touchdown was negated by an illegal block. But Tartan got in front thanks to an 85-yard kick return for a touchdown by Dorian Singer. Big third down here. Pass is complete. A huge third down conversion, making the reception Zach Meyer, the tight end. Zach Meyer 
entering this game had only six catches, but they were for big yards, 117, and he picks up 11 huge yards there. That extends the drive for the Titans and gives them some breathing room. First and 10 at the 23. Matamidi reads the play and they snuff out the run. Owen had nowhere to go. And that's a loss of three yards. Second and 13 at the 20. Titans looking to end a long-standing losing streak to the Zephyrs. And shift this rivalry in their favor. Owen gets them past the original line of scrimmage, but a long third down again for the Titans. So once again, a key third down. At this stage, every third down is key. Whalen lines up under center. Now he rolls to his right on the bootleg. Pass is caught by Meyer, but where will they spot him? A flag is thrown. A late flag comes in. Hold on to your hats. We gotta see how this one ends up. Meyer had enough for the first down, but we have to see the marker. And an eligible receiver downfield. So what would have been a another third down conversion for the Titans is negated, and that's the second big penalty to wipe away a crucial Tartan result. So that'll make it third and 14. That would have been a first down as Meyer made the catch and got past the first down marker, but another ineligible receiver. That's the second time they've been hit with an ineligible receiver penalty. Not many plays for third and 14. You'd love to get a first down, but if nothing else, you want to pick up some yards, and they won't. That play was blown up. Kimmins on the carry. Matamidi didn't fall for it. They'll have great field position and plenty of time for a go-ahead drive. Remember that third down conversion that was negated by an ineligible receiver penalty. So Tartan with a 14-10 lead. It's gonna be up to their defense to hold serve on a short field. Singer in trouble. A low snap and Matamidi won't have to worry about traversing the field. They will get first and goal. Bjork making the tackle, but it's a moot point. A low snap, and Singer came out late, so I'm not sure if a fake was planned or if the low snap just messed up the timing. But a series of unfortunate events at the worst possible time if you're the Titans, the Zephyrs. First and goal at the five. If you're a Zephyrs fan, I don't think you'll expect any trouble here to punch it in. Not with Eric Bjork in the backfield. And he gets the carry. Gets to the one. Second and goal. Matamidi looking for the go-ahead score. 
in an emotionally charged game. Arlinson will keep it himself and cross the plane for the touchdown. Matamidai retakes the lead. Our third lead change of the game. But a lot of time left. We still have the PAT, of course. Although Kyle Oswald has been automatic so far. Oswald in the kick for the Zephyrs. Jake Arlinson with his third rushing touchdown of the year. The point after is good. Matamidi leads 17 to 14 with 546 remaining. That being said, 546 is a lot of time. And remember, both teams still have all three timeouts. So a 30-yard field goal, in a sense, from Kyle Oswald back in the third quarter is the difference in our score. If you just joined us, a series of miscues afflicted the Titans at the worst possible time. An ineligible receiver penalty negated a third down conversion and then a botched snap as Dorian Singer attempted to punt. Gave Matamidai first and goal at the five and with their rushing attack, that was easy pickings for a touchdown. So Matamidai coming up with a couple of big plays. And now they will play defense to try to keep their three point lead intact. 5.46 left. And that was a squibbler which Tartan will let bounce into the end zone for a touchback, and Matamidai applauding that kick. Normally you don't applaud touchbacks, but after giving up a kick return for a touchdown, the last time on special teams, Matamidai will take it. Tartan will have to go 80 yards for a go-ahead score. But we've seen them pick up yards in chunks before. Remember Tim Owen back in the second quarter Ran it in from 57 yards out. And we can feel the vibrations in the press box. Named for Al Sansgard as the Matamidi fans. Sense a critical juncture. And Owen is stuffed on first down. Grand strand on the tackle. Short gain, second and eight. Second and eight, Titans. Whalen. Pass to Singer's caught, and Singer with some room to run. Goes out of bounds. And he'll have enough for the first down. They will spot him at the 32 yard line for a gain of 10. And that quiets the crowd here at George Smith Field. This stadium, the site of many memories in the sport of football. And we're about to get another one. The question is, who will be on the winning end of it? Play action, Whalen rolling left. Throws up the middle to Meyer, pass is caught, and Meyer is past midfield. Meyer tackled at the 44-yard line. 
A gain of 14. 24. More importantly, a first down. And Tartan, they could use a drive like this after their last one ended in disaster. A 24-yard gain by Meyer gives them first and 10 at the 43. Flag on the play. Whalen hit as he throws. Pass is caught by Kimmins. He's in, but I don't know if this will count. It's ruled a touchdown. The flag is against Matamidi. That's what the referee signaled, but hold on. It's going against Tartan. That's the second touchdown wiped away by a penalty. Penalties afflicting the Titans at highly inopportune moments. That'll make it first and 15 for the Titans. And they'll have to try again. A punt return for a touchdown wiped away. And then a 43-yard pass to Kimmins wiped away. Both would have given Tartan big plays. Owen on the carry. And he'll be tackled at the 45-yard line. Four minutes to go. It's second and 12. And now they've got the down marker corrected. It was reading fourth down. What can I say? It's a tense moment here. Hernandez on the carry. Runs through a hole up the middle, but Tartan's going to need more than that if they want to move the ball downfield. Ball is spotted near the 42 yard line. It will be third and eight. You have to imagine this is four down territory. And if so, the Titans will have two chances to pick up eight yards. They still have all three timeouts if they cannot convert. Whalen throws, finds Singer. Singer just short of the first down. And Tartan, I presume, will go for it. Ball's at the 35. Fourth and about two yards. The Titans need to get the ball to the 38-yard line to continue this drive, and time is winding down. You can feel the energy rising. Somebody moved, and it's encroachment. So Tartan will get the first down. They got Matamidi on a hard count, and the drive continues with two minutes remaining. Wow. 
We have the makings of an instant classic, folks. Here at George Smith Field. And the Titans get a fresh set of downs following the encroachment penalty at the 30. The clock continues to roll. The Titans still have all three timeouts if they need it. Whalen looking left. And the pass falls incomplete. Antoine Kimmins, the intended receiver. Kimmins, the man who caught what would have been a 43-yard touchdown pass to put the Titans ahead. That was wiped away by a penalty. Second and 10. Of course, this is four down territory at this stage of the game. This rivalry was once one-sided, but the Titans have drawn closer and closer each year. They reached the section final to the same Matamidai Zephyrus a year ago. Now, whatever the result, you have to like the steps they're taking as Owen finds a hole up the middle. A nice gain there. And Tartan electing to use their first timeout of the second half. They'll have third and two following the break. But this rivalry, a long-standing one back in the Metro East Conference days and now in district play, a rivalry dominated by Matamida in recent years, but the Titans took some big steps to close in that mark and draw that gap within a closer proximity. As we noted, a 27-20 game in the regular season meeting last year. And then Matamidai won 14 to nothing in the 4-5A section final. Whatever the result, you have to imagine, you have to presume that if the Titans and Zephyrs are to meet again in postseason play, the outcome would be far more unpredictable than what we have seen in recent years. The Titans slowly but surely rising their status in the sport of football and the Zephyrs hoping to maintain their perch at the top of section 45A. Third and two, again, four down territory. 126 on the clock. Owen on the carry. He's got some blocking. He has the first down and he runs out of bounds at the 15 yard line. That stops the clock, a seven yard gain for Owen. And the Titans enter the red zone. First down, Titans. It's all coming down to this. And with the Titans electing to use a timeout and the amount of time left in the game, they cannot afford a turnover now. Oh, and the deep back. Kimmins in motion on first and 10. Owen with the carry, he's got a hole. Follows his blockers, and he's in for the touchdown! No flags, Tartan was looking, the coaches were making sure there was no yellow on the field, and the Titans take the lead with 1.15 left in the game. If you're a football fan, you might wonder did they leave too much time, but the important thing if you're the Titans, get the go-ahead score and then worry about the defense. Tim Owen runs it in from 15 yards out for his second rushing touchdown of the game, his eighth of the season. The extra point from Waylon is good, and that is crucial because that makes it 21-17. In other words, Mata Bidai cannot settle for a field goal. They have to get a touchdown. And what a story this is for the Titans, no matter the result. Despite all the adversity, two penalties that wiped away touchdowns on the drive where they needed it most, Tim Owen comes through in the clutch. But the Zephyrs will have about a minute and change left and all three timeouts. So Tartan not about to coast into the sunset just yet. 
<laughs> and the tartan statistician affirms that, telling me straight up, no. <laughs> well, they know what's at stake. And they know this rivalry is too competitive, too talented to make any proclamations before the clock reads zero. But a big play for the Titans who have been taking steps every year to make themselves a competitive program. We noted in the open in 2015, this team one and eight, 2016, three and six. Last year, five and six, but they got to the section final in 4-5-A and played this Matamidi team very well. Now they have a chance to pick up a win. Tanner Whitmore and Tyler Tangwall will receive this kick. It will go to Whitmore. Whitmore will look for some blocking and he won't get it. Terrell Albert got to him and Matamidi will start deep in their own territory. They will spot it at the 16 yard line. What a game if you're watching on SCC. Like I said, this is a one heck of a time to make a broadcast debut. A nail biter coming up. 111, the Zephyrs have to go 84 yards. They cannot get a field goal. Kimmins makes the tackle. Tangwall with the reception but he stayed in bounds, the clock continues to run. The Zephyrs have all three timeouts, they will not use one here. They're going to play hurry up. Arlinson drops back, throws, and the pass falls incomplete, that will bring up third down. It will be third and four. Clock stops with 46.8 left. Third and five. Clock stops for the incomplete pass, as you know, but the Zephyrs do have all three timeouts. They trail by four. Bjork on the carry. He'll need a big gain. He's got enough for the first down. That will stop the clock to move the chains with 40 seconds left. Matamidi still holding on to their timeouts. There's a flag on the play unless the Zephyrs called a timeout beforehand. A false start. Wow. That pushes the Zephyrs back five yards. And they haven't called a timeout at all on this drive. Really strange. 35 seconds, Arlinson in trouble. Has to get rid of it. And the pass falls incomplete. Hadley, the intended receiver, Kimmins on the coverage. The two football and basketball crossovers on that play there. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of them in the winter in Metro East Conference play, but Kimmins is hoping to get a big football highlight onto his reel, even though he'll be going to college to play hoops. Twenty nine point one, second and fifteen. Matabidi on the ropes. Hershey on the carry. Ball is fumbled and it's picked up by Tartan. That will do it. The Titans with their biggest win of the season. They've got to take a kneel down before it's official. I'm not sure who came up with it. You see number 99, Randy Kubogny, coming off the field with the ball. And the Tartan fans, the Tartan Titans, they've been waiting so long to rewrite this rivalry in their favor. Balls on the quick, quick. So he's on the third and 
They get the fumble. And perhaps a fitting way to end this game. They had two touchdowns wiped away by penalties. Coming into this game, they had scored a total of seven points in their last two games. They get 21 here. Matamidi will use one of their timeouts. They still have all three, so they will make the Titans take a few kneel downs here. But barring something strange, the Titans will pick up a statement win. And if this result holds, both teams would be even again at five and two. Both teams face winnable opponents next Wednesday. So the question would be, who would get the one seed and how would the head-to-head -head matchup play a role? In wrestling, but uh, Tartan, <laughs> we'll see what they do here because the Zephyrs do have two more timeouts. So Tartan, even if they get a couple kneel downs here, they would have to run at least one play on fourth down. And so the Zephyrs are hoping to get a few seconds left. Maybe that's the idea. And Waylon, recognizing this, backed up a few yards and waited for Matabidi to make a move before taking a knee to eat up a few more seconds. So the Zephyrs call another timeout, but that shoot up four seconds of clock. So even in the victory formation, we have some strategy going on. Now I have... An astute Tartan statistician. How many yards did Tim Owen pick up tonight? He'd have to look it up. <laughs> I thought they paid you the big bucks. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everyone, the Tartan staff, for uh, filling me in on a couple of mathematical moments and Matamidi for their hospitality, inviting us here another time for what was a thrilling game. And it looks like we have a standard formation now on third down. Tartan will run a play to Owen. And all Owen needs to do is just run some clock. And he'll do just that. He did lose a few. The Zephyrs will call a timeout. Again, down in distance, not a concern for Tartan. All they want to do is eat up more time. And I've never seen a victory formation strategy like this. Tartan took a knee. Matabide called timeout, so... They fake taking an E and then do one to eat up four seconds. And on that run by Owen, even though it resulted in a loss of four, that ate up nine seconds of clock. You never know what you'll get here in this sport. For the Titans, <laughs> this seems like a formality waiting to celebrate. They got a fumble while Matamira was driving, and Tim Owen, the hero, a 57-yard scamper back in the second quarter, a 15-yard run that put Tartan ahead, and let's not forget Dorian Singer's 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Fourth down, Owen just trying to run as much clock as he can. Zephyrus will take over with four and a half seconds. They're out of timeouts. So I would expect something along the lines of Boise State, Oklahoma 2007, the Hook and Ladder, Statue of Liberty, or Stanford, California, 1982. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. I don't see the, the band anywhere, so I guess we can't have Stanford, California, 1982, but that's what Mata I would need in the short term, in simple terms, to get a touchdown. Arlinson, here we go. York has it. Here come the laterals. 
And Hadley is run out of bounds. Tartan can celebrate. It's a final, 21-17. The Titans with their biggest win of the season. And they finally get one over their longtime rival. We'll see if that result is replicated in section play, but if you're Tartan, this gets you back on track. Matamidi, they'll get North St. Paul. That should be a winnable game. One thing's for sure, these two teams will get the first round by. Tartan's victory effectively cements that. The question will be who gets the one seed. We still have another week of games to play before the seedings are out, but what a game for the Titans. Unbelievable. Tim Owen with a couple of big plays. Dorian Singer with an 85-yard kick return and Tartan's defense coming up clutch when they needed them, when they needed it, getting the fumble and making this a formality. That wraps up our coverage here from George Smith Field, the final. Tartan 21, Matavidi 17, an exciting game. We hope to be back here for the Section 4 5A final here on SAC Sports. But until then, this is Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.